automate your RF collection process. My name is Mary Claire Charlton and I work in marketing and communications at Ivy Wave. We're very excited to be with you. We have a lot to cover today, so we're going to use the hour as wisely as possible. We're going to start off with a quick intro on the subject matter by Benoit Fleury, Ivy Wave's VP Products and Innovation. Our six guest speakers will then each present a story on how their product was used by a customer to better automate the RF collection process. And then for the last 20 minutes, our guest speakers will discuss the questions that you asked when you registered. So thank you for asking questions as they have helped us develop the content for today's session. Um, before we begin, I just have a few housekeeping items to go over. First of all, we did a session um, last night for us for um, the Asia Pacific region and we had a couple of technical glitches so I just wanted to pre-warn everyone that if it happens again, please just be patient with us and we will be back <laughs> momentarily but we hope it doesn't happen. Um, if you have any questions for our panelists, you can ask them in the questions box on the GoToWebinar control panel. And if we have extra time at the end, we'll answer a few of these. Um, for audio difficulties, we will try to speak as loudly and clearly as possible, but please make sure to check your own audio settings on your computer or your phone as you dialed in. Um, we'll be recording today's webinar and sending the recording as well as the full slide deck to everyone by the end of the week via email and the recording will be on the Ivy Wave website as well. And lastly, I'll be actively tweeting throughout the webinar and I encourage you to join me. So you can follow us at Ivy Wave and use the hashtag Ivy Wave Talks to join in. So our first speaker today is Benoit Fleury and he is one of the main brains behind Ivy Wave's RF collection capabilities. So without further ado, over to you Benoit. Thank you uh, very much, Marie-Claire, and uh, hello, everyone. What I'd like to do is just uh, spend the next uh, few minutes to uh, provide you a, with a context um, for uh, today's webinar. And for those of you not familiar with IB Wave, uh, I'll say a few words to introduce the, uh, the company as well. So IB Wave is a Montreal-based company that for this, that started um, uh, providing planning and design software for indoor wireless networks uh, 12 years ago, more or less, so 2003. And this has pretty well remained our focus ever since. Now, we have expanded our portfolio of products a fair bit over the years, and today our toolkit is used in 87 countries by over 700 customers. That include operators, equipment vendors, and also system integrators. Our solutions address multiple technologies, such as uh, 2G, 3G, LTE, Wi-Fi, public safety, um, and also uh, different architectures. So whether we're talking about uh, uh, DAS networks, repeaters, uh, Wi-Fi, um, so it's pretty much independent of that. And importantly, are vendor neutral. So both in terms of equipment OEMs and tool vendors. And the reason for that is, um, is to maximize the flexibility of choice for operators and system integrators. Sorry, Benoit, I just have to interrupt for one second. Um, your screen is not showing, so if we could just go and share it quickly. I hadn't noticed before since I was speaking, but... Uh, okay, so now I see it. And if you can... Yeah, so you can... Okay. Sorry Still about here? that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. So um, here we go. Okay. So then the other thing I want to say is that we um, we do continue to invest uh, heavily in all our products, and the, the primary goal is to is to streamline the processes, uh, and that's our primary motivation, to simplify tasks and uh, ultimately for saving a lot of time and money for our users. So that's our prim primary uh, motivation for, uh, for investing in our products uh, going forward. All right, so now prior to the design and installation phases, doing a proper survey is important to ensure that all the right information is collected in order to ensure good design quality and also minimize surprises that can be pretty expensive down the line. 
So the topic for today's webinar is how the integration of RF collection and the in-building design process has been streamlined. And this was achieved in close collaboration between Ivy Wave and most collection tool vendors that are in use today. Now, Ivy Wave Mobile is an Android-based application that runs on, on tablets and smartphones um, that's used to gather all the required site information prior to the design phase. In addition to digitizing notes, pictures and drawings uh, into an IBA file, which in itself saves a lot of time as compared with traditional methods, it now also integrates RF data collection into the same file in a way um, that is quite seamless. And the real saving here is that there's no longer a need to manually import this information into the design phase, which has been a manual process up till now and took a fair bit of time and was also error prone. So we have, in effect, automated this step and saved hours per design while ensuring better quality in the process. Now, in the case of DAS designs, uh, we're talking about automated integration of the collected RF data into an IB Wave design file, and that's done via the survey file that comes from um, IB Wave Mobile Note. In the case of small cells or even just uh, Wi-Fi access points, well, this integration is done automatically um, directly into the mobile planner uh, when that work is done right on site. So the RF collection tool vendors and IB Wave have developed an interface that allows data to be seamlessly exchanged between IB Wave Mobile and the collection tools that, that run on the same physical Android device. And this integration is now fully operational between IB Wave Mobile for both uh, mobile note and mobile planner versions, and seven collection tool vendors that are shown here in this chart, six of which we'll hear uh, more uh, about in this webinar. So additionally, as a few of the tool vendors that are in the pro progress of, um, of, uh, of, of doing this similar integration, so stay tuned for a little bit more on this. Um, but for today, we'll hear now from six leading RF collection tool vendors with emphasis on real life examples that I'm sure you'll find uh, very interesting. And this will be followed, like uh, Marika said earlier, by a panel type session where we'll have the chance to ask uh, some, uh, some really good questions. So uh, back to you, Marika. Thank you, Benoit. So our first presenter today is Michael Carlberg lax He's a product manager at ASCOM, and he's based out of Skelleftia, Sweden. Over to you, Michael. Thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the uh, ASCOM line of tools through our TEMS portfolio, which have been helping operators uh, measure, understand, and also optimize the quality of experience for uh, subscribers in, in mo mobile wireless networks. Uh, we've been in this industry all the way from, from 2G and, of course, uh, uh, participating very actively in the, the deployments of Volti and Athlete of Advance worldwide. Our, Tools are available in, in uh, about 170 countries. Uh, our staff is also available on, on a global scale. Uh, we have a good cooperation uh, with uh, handset vendors all across the world, including uh, Samsung and Apple, uh, as an example. And I wanted to take us on a bit of a, a journey, look at where we're coming from and where we're going in terms of how we are working with uh, network testing in uh, pedestrian, urban, or indoor uh, environments. So if we look at the first uh, image, some of you might uh, uh, chuckle in, in recognition of just how much equipment uh, really was carried if you go back maybe uh, four, five, six years ago for, for a drive testing session. Uh, and it, if we look back, it, it's a fairly comfortable environment. We have power, we have air conditioning, we have a place to sit, we have somewhere to store our equipment, as we can see in the next image. Uh, and as we start to move to where our subscribers are, as we start to move indoor, uh, things start to become a practical challenge. And if we look at the next image, uh, the need to handle equipment smartly, quickly becomes uh, an issue. Uh, there are some, some clever ways to address this. And I'm, not, I'm not saying that the next image is a good one uh, to approach this. But what we can see and, and where we are today, I think, is, is more close to what the next image will represent. And, and even that is still old today. 
uh, if you look at you go inside a, a, a mall type of environment having multiple phones with you to test the subscriber point of view uh, if you look back two years this fella he's he would be standing out a bit today because he has a tablet PC and who has that uh, when they go indoor everything is about small tablets smart small smartphones so while the solutions have become much more portable uh, to solve this practical challenge when going indoor uh, looking at where we are today I think this this picture symbolizes where we are today we're using tablets we're using uh, smartphones inside a discrete backpack uh, but some of our customers are e taking this even further uh, they're even looking at segways to test big venues we have customers in Japan that are even using snowboards to test uh, uh, ski resorts and if that's not fast for you you can put things in a, in a jet plane which is what Ericsson did when they tested LTE handovers in the first commercial network uh, and keeping things in the air uh, using drones for testing of uh, indoor environments uh, for a time maybe was a, a novel fun idea uh, maybe not very practical but today it is practical it, it is reality and all of these examples are realities with, with real customers in real operations. And I'll give you an example. If we go to Dubai, for example, we have a multinational uh, mobile network uh, performance optimizer that is doing optimization of the Dubai International Stadium uh, using drones and doing so successfully. And if we look at the next slide, what we can see is they're actually managing to carry uh, four fairly uh, large smartphones. Uh, if you look at the top right corner there, you can see that they are, are actually mounted there on the phones or, or on the drone. So Galaxy S4, Galaxy X5, pretty big phones. Uh, you're doing the standard Twitter, idle voice and data measurements. And the setup is that, this is a similar setup that's used across uh, events all over the world, is that you have uh, the drone measuring, could be somebody walking a show floor, it's uploading data to uh, a cloud repository where that data is analyzed. Uh, and after that, a report is going to be generated, a predefined report, as we can see in the next image. Yeah, there. So a predefined report is going to end up with the drone operator. And that report is going to help him make a decision. So am I done with my, my collection stage? Should I start to analyze this, this venue in, in, in bigger detail? So this is a real time saver for a lot of our customers today. And the drone application is for sure interesting. Just look at what Amazon is doing, for example. And a lot of other industries is looking at how to automate processes uh, using these. Uh, legislation can be an issue in some countries, but uh, looking at the business opportunities around it, uh, we're sure to see a lot of stuff uh, happening there as well to make things easier. Uh, so thank you very much and back to you, Benoit. Thank you, Michael. Um, our next speaker is Archit Jain. He's the Senior Product Manager at Falcon Smart. So over to you, Archit. Thanks, Marie. Uh, Good morning, everyone. My name is Archit Jain. Uh, I'm the Senior Product Manager at Falcon Smart Technologies. Uh, today's topic for discussion is quite interesting, how to automate your RF collection process. Uh, so some introduction about our products at Falcon Smart. Uh, first is the Falcon Kit, uh, which is the in-field automation of your RF collection uh, due to quick setup and, uh, and testing. Uh, second is the Falcon Live, which is the web console, uh, web server-based uh, application, uh, which is the in-office automation. Uh, number three is the Falcon Analytics, uh, which is uh, an automation for post-processing and reporting. Next, please. So the topic for discussion today is, uh, you know, very tightly coupled with what are the current challenges uh, for indoor walk testing as of today. Uh, you know, lack of integrated tools to verify design. You know, uh, when you are walk testing a design, a DAS venue or a small cell venue, uh, we would like to cover, you know, we would like to, co to have your coverage testing. Uh, quickly, we would like, like to know if all the antennas are transmitting properly or not. Interference testing, we would like to know uh, what are the macro ingress and macro ingress delta levels. Uh, performance testing, throughput, latency, uh, also the handovers through entry and exit walks. So all these are challenges for the current scenarios because all these can be availed only after the drive test is completed. And that might require 
site revisit second time, third time. So how do we tackle these? Next. So one of the important things that we have done at Falcon Smart is that integration of IB Wave uh, design file in the Falcon kit. So on the snapshot being shown here, we can import the cell file of the venue directly in Falcon kit. And by doing that, you know where the transmitters are. You know where your DAS nodes are. So you can have much focused testing so the person in the field can have a much focused testing and determine if he's at the right location or not. Next. This is another snapshot that tells you uh, the various transmitters on the left-hand side which are present on an indoor venue. So you can tap on the uh, transmitters and you can see what are my frequencies allocated, what are my scrambling codes, what are my PSCs. So you can have that information readily available in the field as well. So this, this is a big positive so for someone who is doing the testing uh, in the field. Next. So uh, typically, you know, when we're deploying DAS, uh, this is a, a typical use case of DAS deployment. Uh, you know, you, you first do a baseline walk. Uh, this is when you have not installed any DAS nodes. So then you do a baseline walk. Next is after you have made the determination that you have a lack in coverage, you install some DAS nodes or you ins install some small cells. So you do a functional call testing there. Uh, after you've installed all your DAS nodes, you do the end RF optimization walk. So all these processes can be automated uh, using the Falcon kit with close integration uh, with IB Wave. Next. Okay, so this is a typical case study that we did in Oracle Arena in Oakland uh, using an ATAR walk test of the entire venue. So we, what we found out was, uh, you know, we using the Falcon kit, the Falcon analytics, and Falcon live, we could have a saving of around 40% in terms of man hours and tools. And we, are, and we obtained those savings by a lot of automation in the field, by having a lower setup time of the kit, and by having instant reporting, and also being able to see all the results of the test uh, using the web console. So this reduced the need for site revisits, site get, getting the work done the first time right. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Archit. Our next speaker is David Myers. He's the manager of sales engineering at Anite and calling in from Texas today. Over to you, David. Thanks, Marie Claire. Uh, my name is David Myers. I'm a manager of sales engineering at Anite Network Testing. And uh, next slide, please. And a little bit of, about Anight Network Testing. Uh, we're specialists in wireless network testing. Uh, we, we launched our wireless business back in 1993. We acquired uh, Nemo Network Testing Tools in 2006. We acquired Exceed Technologies in 2014. And we have really all the tools you need to optimize wireless networks from drive testing, benchmarking, scanning, indoor testing, customer experience management, remote control, and post-processing. Uh, we serve the wireless ecosystem by uh, working with mobile operators, network equipment manufacturers, chipset vendors, regulatory bodies, and service contractors. We're headquartered in the UK in Fleet, Hampshire, and we have main offices in Olu, Finland, uh, Paris, Singapore, Dallas, and two locations in Virginia. Next slide, please. And we really provide end-to-end -end cutting edge wireless network testing and analysis systems from monitoring and optimization to troubleshooting and benchmarking, uh, performance, capacity and customer experience management, site acceptance, small cell analytics, maintenance, and on to monitoring, analyzing, reporting. And our products are used by more than 400 mobile operators in over 100 countries worldwide. Next slide, please. So we have a complete tool set for indoor measurement, verification, and acceptance from data collection by using Nemo Walker Air or Nemo Handy and uh, automated or remote control with Nemo Commander, 
onto reporting and analysis through NEMO Windcatcher or Zenergy and automation uh, with NEMO Zenergy. Next slide, please. So with respect to um, automated in-building in testing and uh, working with IBWAVE, we support native uh, IBWC map files. So really just to import these into the tool, it's just go into settings, indoor, and import IBWAVE maps. On the first image, the, the third line from the bottom, you see import IBWAVE maps. And then once you do that, you select the building that you want to walk and then select the floor and then you're ready to begin. Next slide, please. And this gives you a couple different things once you have these IB Wave uh, layers in your data collection tool. So you have visualization of your indoor antenna locations and you have real-time data collection so you can verify if different antennas are transmitting or not by visual notifications um, in terms of red or green um, if a DAS antenna is not transmitting. And you also get real-time information on poor coverage areas. Next slide, please. We also have support for zones in IBWAVE files. So zones can be used um, in an IBWAVE project as a layer that will be drawn on top of an indoor floor plan. And zones are used to draw areas for DASC antenna groups to graphically show where certain cells are transmitting and what areas they cover. And zones can be used in planning and subsequently verification of correct antenna installation. Next slide, please. So this is a case study that we did in a mall in Dallas, Texas. So we had two operators and uh, we're looking at vans 17, 2, and 13 and doing some LTE benchmarking. So as you can see in the image on the left, you can see that there's a red circle that there was a, a missing DAS antenna. And this was discovered in real time during the walk. And so the operator there can then take action, doesn't have to wait to get back to the office to tell somebody else to send someone else back out to remedy that problem. You can also see that there are some weak areas there on the far left of the walk that need to be addressed um, back in the design phase. Uh, next slide, please. And if you have any questions, we can be contacted at anight.com front slash Nemo or nemo.sales at anight.com. Thank you. Back to you, Marie Claire. Thank you very much, David. Our next speaker is Sergey Olenik from Salutelia, where he's the Director of Engineering Operations. Over to you, Sergey. Thank you very much. This is Sergey from uh, Salutelia, uh, Director of Engineering for Design as well as Field. Uh, I'm just going to quickly uh, give a background on our company. Uh, what differentiates us slightly uh, from uh, some of our competitors is the fact that uh, we are a, uh, a full, full turnkey type company. Uh, we've, uh, we've started our business as a testing uh, solution using third party vendors as well as um, uh, doing uh, in house design for indoor and outdoor networks. Uh, our own tool uh, came, came to be as a necessity to make, uh, to make things much more seamless and easier to use during the, uh, the, the testing phase. Uh, we are, as I said, a full turnkey a solutions company. We provide full site surveys. We do CW testing. We, we do design indoor, outdoor, uh, as well as commissioning optimizations, all the acceptance testing from all major carriers. We work with BTS integration as well as installation. Uh, you can go to uh, next slide, please. Uh, the importance. Uh, once again, it was mentioned before. Uh, the preliminary site survey as well as the testing is absolutely crucial portion of, of the functional test system. Uh, you know, it does provide opportunity to gather all the important site information uh, for, you know, building a model in IV Wave, uh, as well as uh, gives you a good uh, understanding of existing RF requirements and the challenges that might come, up, uh, come to existence during the design phase. Uh, I can't stress more uh, the, the importance of accuracy of the data that co that's been collected during this phase is absolutely detrimental to the design as well as the commissioning uh, phase uh, to, to have a, a data that is usable, the data that can be used to tune the model uh, and to make the design uh, workable and constructible. Next slide, please. Uh, 
And that's where so you tell you came up uh, with our own in-house tool. Uh, where it is called Wind Wireless Intelligence On Demand. It is uh, a, a a software that uh, that works on any Android-based system with both of chipset. You don't have to have any particular uh, handset in order for it to work. Uh, the UE will test absolutely all the cloud technologies, including GSM as well as Wi-Fi. Um, uh, we also uh, we're capable of doing an instant processing and real-time PPI, meaning that uh, where in the past we had to get to go out the field and pull the data, uh, you know, upload it either to your computer or send it back to the office for the team to check the integrity of the data, check the accuracy and the usability of it. Uh, what the WID is able to do is you, you can do absolutely all of that on the fly. You can also uh, look up a PC Tel, IP Black Scanner, uh, as well as five other devices, everything from Bluetooth. So you no longer have any wires, basically, you can just walk through the bank, one phone or a tablet, collecting all the data needed from all the carriers in the air, including a, uh, a scanner tool. And uh, what we've done recently worked uh, directly and diligently with IP Wave to integrate our solution into the IP Wave mobile. So it's completely seamless, meaning that when you are doing your site survey using IP Wave mobile, you collect the data uh, that can be moved directly uh, into the IP Wave design and can be also Simultaneously uploaded into either IP Wave Unity or through our internal server to the console on the other side. So we are able to do care aggregation these days uh, as well as the voting testing. And most importantly, I'd like to stress is that uh, there's no longer a need to have an actual RF engineer in the field conducting the test. Anyone can be in the field, anyone who can use an Android phone, and a full uh, remote access can be granted to a uh, RF engineer from the office who will control the test. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just a couple of uh, couple of screenshots from the testing that we've done at Las Vegas and Caesar's Place. Dallas, I'm sorry. Uh, we've done quite a few venues in, in Las Vegas in the past. Uh, we've sent a couple of teams uh, to do uh, your typical, uh, typical RF collection as well as using Quinn to see how much time we can say and how accurate the testing can be. Uh, controlling obviously all of this through the live console, through our, through our server, we're able to collect the data 50% quicker than doing uh, an old fashioned way to where the data has to be uh, collected, sent to the office, analyzed, plots have to be created, and so forth. With our solution, everything can be, can be happening pretty much in real life. Uh, all the reports can be run in real life. Uh, statistics, graphs, charts um, that are absolutely crucial as well, not only in a uh, redesign phase, but also in the commissioning and optimization phase. Can you go to the next slide? Next slide, please. And uh, just very quickly, once again, uh, the wind uh, wind integration with IP Wave. We have talked with IP Wave team directly to make sure that the benchmark and the design tool is all version of one. There's no longer a need to uh, use third party devices, third party scanners. Uh, we can pretty much use any off the shelf Android smartphone or tablet. Uh, the wind will collect all the network data, uh, which can be, like I said, controlled remotely via your console and uh, moved directly into the IB way for the IBWC format. And by, by making a standard, by standardizing the data exchange between the IB way mobile and the tool that we're collection, we actually able to, uh, we're able to, our customers to experience a considerable time and cost saving uh, while minimizing the errors. Uh, particularly, there's no longer need to make this for any of the data. Uh, and there's no errors collected in the field, brought back to the office, and there's no need to return back to the field to recollect the data. So all the data is collected on the phone, can be sent through the server into the console in real time, and uh, is analyzed before it's Next slide. 
Okay. Thank question. you, Sergey. Um, oh, we, that's we it. All trouble. right. We had trouble hearing you for the last um, minute or so. So I apologize. Sorry to everyone sorry. for those audio issues. <laughs> Um, so thank, thank you, you very much, Sergey. Um, our next speaker is Denise Sanchez, who is the product line manager at JDSU. Over to you, Denise. Thank you, Marie Claire. You guys can hear me well. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. We, we can proceed with the next slide. Yes, please. The next one, anyway. So based on the years of experience here with JDSU collecting RF data both outdoors and indoors, particularly for DAS, here is a list of challenges associated to the, to the testing of the, of the deployment, particularly for the RF. Uh, probably everybody in the audience is very familiarized with uh, the list of, of these problems, these challenges ahead, uh, how to test and validate the RF environment overall, what is the impact of the coaxial, the fiber, the twisted pair on the RF performance, um, what is the level of RF interference being facing in that particular building? Are the antennas positioned optimally? How I'm going to test the, the installation for the new mobile apps that everybody wants to use, the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Instagrams, all these uh, applications everybody's using, particularly in indoor these days. Uh, it's important to know the fact that these challenges, uh, most of them, if not all, will remain uh, through the different uh, life cycles of the DAS from the early design and survey cycle up to the uh, optimization, maintenance, commissioning, you name it, all these, all these problems are, are almost always there for us to, to monitor. Next slide, please. Uh, how we collect the data? These are, there are different uh, strategies for this. Uh, today it's very common the use of uh, the smartphones uh, running some type of uh, application that can collect the RF data and the application layer data as well. This can be a single smartphone and a handheld. Basically, in JDSU, our solution is called TrueSight. An alternative to the single smartphone is the ability to use multiple phones all together at the same time, possibly with the addition of a scanner. Uh, for example, they are very convenient uh, portable scanners today in the market from PCTL or from the DRT. They are Bluetooth uh, enabled, and all these devices can be connected uh, to a tablet controller uh, where we can import our IB Wave projects and we are able to walk comfortably around. Typically, all these devices can be stored in a backpack or in a messenger bag, which is uh, what JDSU provides, uh, which is much more discreet option as well to walk around. In, uh, in building environments. Next slide, please. Uh, we're going to briefly describe some use cases here. There is a, uh, there's not a lot of time here to go into a lot of detail, but basically, uh, for example, the, the initial survey uh, use case, this is uh, when uh, we have the ability not only to import an IB Wave project into the collection tool, which is a very cool thing to do because then we get automatically all the information about the floor plan, the location of the antennas, what these antennas are supposed to be transmitting in terms of technology, uh, frequencies, channels, uh, and so on. Uh, an extension of this, um, of this cooperation with Ivy Wave is the ability to now exchange data, survey data, with the IB Wave mobile planner application when both uh, mobile planner and the collection tool, in this case, for example, from JDG through site, they run in the same tablet controller and that means that we do not need to have the user manually importing the information anymore. All the data, the, the project data, and the survey data, the, the RF measurements, are automatically exchanged between the two applications in the same tablet. Obviously, the data that you get from the RF tool in the mobile planner, then you can use it for uh, propagation models, for example, in mobile planner, and all the interesting analysis that mobile planner offer to users these days. Next slide, please. One of the uh, most interesting troubleshooting use cases that we can mention here is antenna fault detection. Uh, True Sight, for example, has the ability to detect missing antennas and sector faults in those environments uh, as the user walks by. By sector faults, uh, we mean uh, problems caused by missing or non-fitted antenna. 
the fact that an error might be fitted but not tabled correctly or there is some unbalance in the transmission, this is particularly true these days for MIMO implementations or when a, a cell is not powered, it's actually off. And another common case that we see these days in, in implementations are when uh, sectors are misconfigured, swapped. Basically, we have the ability to identify any mismatch between the original design in the IDWave project and the reality of the implementation of that DAS in that particular building. Next slide, please. Another troubleshooting use case here that uh, our customers are paying uh, a lot of attention is everything related to macro ingress and handovering. This is the, the ability for our tool through site to analyze the levels of macro ingress, the signal coming from the towers outside of the building, when those signals, when those outdoor signals are measured indoor within predefined limits of the DAS channels. Obviously, that creates interference indoor and ultimately may produce handovering, the, the fact that the phone stops being served by the DAS inside the building, I guess, uh, service from the macro outside, which is a typically a, a situation, a scenario that the user wants to avoid, and it would indicate possibly a very poor design on the DAS side as well. Next slide, please. There is a number of other use Hi, cases. Uh, yes? Sorry to interrupt. Um, we, can you just go quickly in your last two? Yeah, absolutely. Need to wrap just up. All the use cases here that we don't have the time to, to elaborate in more detail, uh, from a small cell testing, like uh, events preparation for or live monitoring in big games and so on. The last slide, please, is just a very quick description here, if you want to move on for the last one, which is the, an example here of a very successful uh, case that we had in, in Brazil in the Maracanã Stadium during the, the World Cup where we partnered with Alcatel Lucent and through the use of these tools like for example through site of, uh, specifically we were able to quickly uh, uh, fix a number of problems there in time for the, for the event and secure a very high quality of experience for the customers attending the, the event for the end users. Thank you so much. Thank you very much Denise. So our last speaker today is Rob Wattenberg. He's a sales manager for SwissQual products at Roden Schwartz. Over to you, Rob. Thanks, Mary Claire. Um, hello, everybody. And hopefully um, everybody who's on the call is aware of SwissQual and the products that we've been making for several years that fit into this category nicely. We were acquired by Roden Schwartz back in uh, about three years ago, actually. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and talk about one specific product that, that we have. Go ahead and the next slide. So today I'll talk briefly about our QualiPocky Android uh, handheld product. It's just one component of a family of products that cover everything from benchmarking to RF optimization to uh, just about anything you would need to, to test RF out in the real world. Um, now the nice thing about QualiPocky Android, we're the same with all of our uh, all the people that are on this panel today. Um, it's Android based and that's the Android platform really opened up a ton of opportunities for us to, to increase efficiency for those who need to test in the field. Gone are the days of laptops and phones and cables and complex windows applications and, and now we're focused on an Android operating system that, that forces ease of use into our hands. Uh, when we get access to the radio chipset inside the phone, now we get this wealth of information that can help you diagnose problems, do performance testing on the network, um, and just collect a great deal of information that allows you to optimize uh, your network. So now we push this into an in-building application as it's you know, very portable, um, and now we've got a very low-cost, full-function solution that um, we can really then focus on ease of use with. Um, so go ahead and move to the next slide. And as an extension of this ease of use, what we're now doing is uh, integrating, you know, things like the IBWave mobile planner. And that allows us to take um, a planning tool where a lot of our customers, and I'll talk specifically about one customer without naming names, but he uses IBWave's tools extensively to do almost everything when it comes to in-building um, and small area uh, DAS deployments. And so all of his planning is done in there. The next step for him, obviously, is to have to go out in the field and and uh, collect real-world data. So having this direct interface in an Android environment from the IvyWave mobile planner has really saved a tremendous amount of time in terms of deployment uh, and testing of the deployment. So 
what we're doing now is we're taking the Ivy Wave Mobile Planner, where the planning is done. We import the project with a couple of clicks on the screen, and then um, we can then collect data with our job, and then push that right back into the planner where his uh, validation of the design and, and the real world results are, are put together. And again, we're focused really on efficiency. So go ahead and move to the next slide. Uh, so this is just a quick show of, of how this works. So basically, you pull from Ivy Wave Mobile Planner, you'll pull the Ivy Wave files from the cloud account. You export it right out into the QualiPoc Android application. It's automatically loaded, and, and all the user has to do is verify the selection. Uh, and then we handle geo-reference and non-geo-reference files as well uh, quite easily. So go ahead and move to the next slide. So now we're in the, in the process of hitting the Start button if you've got a pre-programmed um, uh, job to do. And we're now collecting the information. Most of this particular screenshot shows you focus on the RF world, which is what you will need for the Ivy Wave Mobile Planner. And then we can we can do that while doing a ton of performance type tests, whether it's an HTTP download, browsing, YouTube video, um, faulty calls where we're collecting mean opinion score data using Polka. Uh, we can lock on certain cells, um, technologies, PCIs, etc. Uh, and all that data then is collected in QuadPoc, and then go ahead and move to the next slide. And what we'll do is push it right back into the mobile planner. And it's quite, again, quite easy with the, with the Android operating system to do all this stuff. And now we can do a quick, e quick easily verified plan versus actual uh, implementation. And um, and that is essentially what what we've got in a nutshell for just this one product line. And uh, there's a wealth of other things that we can do with this tool as well. So um, if anybody's interested, we can we can certainly talk about it offline. But uh, that was that was pretty much what I had to show. Thank you very much, Rob. So that wraps up the presentation portion of this webinar, and we're going to move on to the panel discussion. So I want to thank everyone again for submitting questions during registration. They really helped us shape the content of the panel. Um, so, without further ado, I'll pass the mic over to Benoit Fleury, who will be moderating the panel. Great. Thanks again, Marie-Claire, and uh, thanks everyone for your, uh, your presentations and, uh, and interesting insights. So, as Marie-Claire said, this is a panel uh, portion of uh, this call, and uh, so we received a, a few questions uh, that I will ask uh, our panelists, and if I can uh, just remind you to, uh, to keep your questions uh, you know, not too, too far from the, a minute or so. Uh, allow us to, to ask a, a few more questions. So uh, let's start with the, uh, the first question. So as not all mobile devices uh, are quite the same, what form of calibration would you suggest uh, in order to achieve uh, greater levels of accuracy? So. Uh, Perhaps we can start um, with uh, Michael from uh, ASCOM. Would you uh, care to, uh, to answer this question? Sure. Uh, so it's, the short answer is it depends. Uh, the practical answer, which I think is the important one, is that smartphone or device lifespan nowadays are shorter and shorter. The devices are old uh, when they hit the shelf. So in order to keep up and testing with the right sus subscriber devices, it's going to be very expensive to calibrate all of your, your equipment. So I'm going to say don't bother with the handsets. Get yourself a really good scanner and use that as a, as a reference, a sanity check towards your mobile devices. And uh, let your mobile devices trust that the quality is good enough, what's coming from the device vendor labs and also the operator labs. Okay, great. Uh, thanks for that. Um, Rob from uh, Roland Schwartz. Sure. And Michael's right on with this. Cell phones are what they are. We can't really do anything to calibrate them. The only thing we can do if it's really important to use just a cell phone is we can actually screen them to find the ones that are more close to being accurate than those that aren't. In our typical experience, we see anything from cell phones that are plus or minus a dB from where we really should expect them to be to 5 dB out, which is probably not very acceptable. But um, w other than screening for, the, for the, the perfect phone out of a serial production lot, uh, using an RF scanning receiver is the right way to do it. With these battery-powered scanners that are out there today, it, it makes it very easy to just connect it to 
whatever these um, Android-based tools are that are out in the field collecting data. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you very much, Rob. Um, let's see. So over to you, uh, Janice from uh, JDSU. Would you care to share your insights on this as well, please? Right, and, and as I mentioned before, today calibration of uh, phones, particularly the phones everybody wants to use for testing, which is the latest possible models, uh, it's it's not possible. Phones are commercial grade devices; they are not originally designed for for testing, and therefore the calibration option is is not available in in, in most, if not all the cases. Uh, in the past, also there were some strategies about using external antennas connected to the phones, which obviously improves certain levels of accuracy, particularly for measuring power levels, but in the latest models available today in the market, the, the use of external antennas on phones is also um, not not clearly not very easy. Um, when it comes to the accuracy, really the use of the scanners or also called receivers is, is probably the best alternative, particularly to compare the power levels measured by the phones versus uh, a specialized device like a, like a scanner receiver. The different options today in the market for scanners, they are all very small, portable, battery operated, Bluetooth enabled, and uh, different vendors offer these solutions and they are integrated by the collection tools typically as well. Okay, great. Um, thanks for this. So uh, maybe one more, uh, Sergey from uh, Solitalia. Yes, I have to agree absolutely with everyone else who came before me. Uh, definitely the, the Android and actually any, any headsets uh, off the shelf is it, not a very re uh, reliable means of uh, testing the network. Nevertheless, you know, this is the device that helps uh, the end user to experience the network. So whatever the data comes uh, from it, it's still obviously valuable. So typically what, you know, what we are do, uh, we do it uh, in our office is that uh, we, uh, we compare the phone against each other, first of all, uh, several different models to, uh, to, to, to see the difference, and against the scanner. Uh, you know, especially now we have IB Wave, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, IB Flex uh, scanner from PC Cell. It's a Bluetooth scanner. It's very easy to uh, to plug in even to the phone, so uh, you can take a look at the differences uh, of the KPI data coming in. Uh, but still, like I said, the, you know, the phones uh, are the end user's devices, and whatever data comes in, that's what's going to be experienced. And that's why I think the mobile carriers actually allow uh, us to use these phones now, which wasn't really the case uh, in the past. So, yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, thanks for that. Um, you know, pretty consistent responses here across the board. Phones obviously vary a lot. And there are the means uh, such as scan scanners and screening, screening to, uh, to help uh, with accuracy. So, I'll move on to... Um, to the next question, and uh, so we're always looking to to simplify tasks uh, and to make our tools uh, easy to use. But that is something which is often um, easier said than done, especially uh, in the RF world. So that brings me to um, to this question here, which is what level of expertise and or training um, is in fact required? To be able to use your, your collection tool effectively. And um, so this time, how about if I start with uh, David from uh, from Anite, uh, your insights uh, on this question, please. Sure. Thanks, Benoit. Um, this is kind of a multi-dimensional question as to what level of expertise or training is required to use our data collection tools. Uh, really, within five, ten minutes, you know, anyone can learn the basic workflow of uh, using Nemo Handy. Um, or Nemo Walker Air to go collect data. But really, the, the longer, the, the more you use the tool, the more um, advanced experience you'll get with the tool, and then you can determine things in real time that maybe you don't, that a, a beginner doesn't see. Um, so it's, it's kind of a difficult question to answer, but uh, to keep it short, I would, you know, I'd say probably 30 minutes or so of training would suffice. And then with advanced training and advanced experience and usage, uh, you would gain more information that um, makes that person more valuable, and you can see things that a beginner can't. All right, thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Janice from uh, JDSU. 
Yeah, thank you. There is a general mindset in the in the industry and with customers and developers, everybody probably that uh, because these are uh, Android type of applications, they need to be, they must be very easy to use, right? Everybody's used to have an application download from the Google Store and uh, immediately understand what they are doing, how how to operate that application, and and, and the same the same applies for this type of RF collection tools. And this is an aspect that we are paying a lot of attention in GDSU, everything related to usability, particularly because uh, our customers are trying to reduce costs as much as possible these days, operational costs. That typically involves the use of folks in the field, uh, technicians in the field, that they are not necessarily engineering level. They, they, they may have a, a good degree of knowledge on, what, uh, on how to operate the tool, but they are not uh, expert level. Sometimes at times that they need to use an, 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 an engineering grade uh, solution. And that means that we need to make tools easy to use, easy to learn to use. And it's something that definitely, I think, uh, is a common trend in the industry these days. All right, great, thank you. Um, Archit from uh, Falcon Smart, what are your, uh, your views here? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is a very important question. In fact, uh, this is where the whole industry is moving towards. So how do we reduce the intelligence from the field? Uh, so one of the classic examples that we have seen from one of our customers is uh, they have been able to move their entire uh, SSD process uh, from the RF team to the deployment crew. So everything that was done earlier by the RF team, uh, by the expertise of RF, has now been moved to the deployment crew. And that's been possible because of you know, Falcon Smart's intuitive and guided process and having checks and balances to arrest any incorrect testing so that when you come back home, uh, you have the right data. OK, uh, thanks, uh, Archit. And uh, so one more for this question uh, from Salutelia uh, Sergi. Any insights? Well, well absolutely. Um, it, it really depends on, on who. Uh, I guess there's two parts to it. Uh, one part is the actual collection, uh, uh, collection of the data that really requires absolute minimum. Uh, Test, I mean, minimum expertise, if anyone can use an Android phone and can run the application. Now, the other portion is uh, someone who is controlling it remotely, being on the console, obviously there needs to be some training, uh, you know, maybe an hour or two or so, to understand uh, the intricacy of, of the tool, uh, to understand uh, what type of APIs can come in, and most importantly, it is to run the report, uh, a customized report. So, for those two portions, Different time you see this, but it's nowhere or absolutely nowhere near what it used to be five, six years ago when we were dealing with these typical type solutions. Everything is very intuitive, everything is a GUI based, uh, you know, connected to, to Bluetooth. So uh, there's absolutely no, no need for, for, for several days of certification and training and so on. Okay, Sergey, thanks, uh, thanks very much for that. Um, okay, so I think uh, we've got time for uh, one more question, and uh, this one is uh, is more of a uh, of a looking ahead uh, question. So uh, you can uh, use your crystal balls or your insights or uh, what your what your thoughts are um, going forward. Um, what do you uh, think can be done to uh, to further automate uh, or simplify the overall uh, RF collection tasks? So, um, so Michael, uh, would you uh, be the first to answer that question? So, what's what's going to happen, or what is already happening, is the collection stage itself, and also the collection tools, are becoming less about looking at a specific signal strength measurement or throughput, and it's more about reducing the amount of site visits, reducing the time that you spend on site but also helping you make a decision as to have I collected enough data, have I collected the right data. Uh, so it's becoming more of a, a help in your decision process. That's where the the collection task is 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 moving towards, as we see it. Okay, good, um, interesting. Uh, thank you for that, um, David from Anite. Uh, 
Sure, thank you. Um, really, the um, the data collection process um, in looking towards a uh, more automation or more simplification uh, right now is is pretty simple. Um, literally, with with our data collection tools, it's four button pushes. It's start the software, tap on the map, tap on a script, and select run, and then start collecting data. Um, some of the other things that can be done. Um, out in the field with multiple units, for example, is you can copy workspaces over from one device or another, or copy scripts and save time and not have to recreate those. Um, you can use Nemo Commander and you do a remote session so you can actually remote into a fleet of devices and control those all simultaneously instead of having 10 people out in the field. You can have one person controlling all of those. Uh, things of that nature um, really can save time and automate the RF collection process. Thank you. Thanks, David. Yeah, some uh, good ideas there. Um, how about uh, Rob from uh, Rolled and Schwartz? Uh, what more can be done to further uh, simplify things? Sure. Uh, I mean, it's interesting looking at this topic because as a company that's been involved with drive testing for so long, it used to be you'd deploy a network and drive and you could move cover a lot of ground in a vehicle. Uh, now with all these in building networks going up, the amount of time on the street is going up dramatically. And what we're trying to do is push the ease of use to a point where the guys that actually have to hang the sites inside buildings are the ones that are doing the testing. And that is a totally different skill level than a typical RF engineer in the field. So where we're heading is moving towards a, a, you know, a smart guy in an office, programming what is an acceptance criteria. A guy in the field just has to hit the green start button and the red stop button, and um, everything else is done in the background. Um, and that, that's, that's where we like to see this heading. And then if there's problems, then your smart guy has got to step in and solve them. Uh, and that's, so that, that's kind of our vision of the future there. Okay, thank you, uh, Rob. And uh, so perhaps one more. Uh, Archit from uh, Falcon Smart, what are your, your thoughts here? I yeah, completely agree with Rob. Uh, I think the intelligence is moving away from uh, moving from in field intelligence to back office intelligence. I think we have. That's, that's where the industry is going in terms of de developing tools and workflows so that the person in the field has to just click the button, start and stop, and all the data collected is real-time analyzed uh, in the back office. And it's, it's available for making quick decisions so that more efficiency is kicked in uh, into the system. So that reduces your revisits and uh, your first-time accuracy improves. Thanks. Okay, great. Well, thank you. And uh, so thanks to everyone for all your, your views, your ideas, and your insights on, uh, on these questions. It was really interesting. I'll turn it uh, back to uh, Marie Claire for uh, closing remarks. Thank you. Um, so we're out of time. Thanks to everybody who joined us today and for your questions um, throughout the webinar and before. If you want to continue discussing this topic, I'm going to start a thread on our LinkedIn group called the IB Wave in Building Community. And if you're not a member yet, I encourage you to join us and join the conversation there. Um, you can look for a recording and the slide deck from today's presentation in your email by the end of the week. Um, so that wraps it up for me. Thank you again to our presenters and panelists and to all of you for taking the time to join us today. Have a great day, and I will now disconnect the call.